Okay, so I kind of want to do a little bit of a tutorial on um, how to design a bird, okay, from what's already available in this book. Okay, um, it's the bald eagle, okay, and um, what I like to do is take and simplify, okay. So what we got, we got yellow legs, white tail, white head, yellow beak, and a brown body. And when you look at other pictures from the back, the wings tend to go over that white tail. So you'll know you'll need to make particularly long wings. So we'll probably be doing the 15, um, Instead of the 15 on the pegs on the wings, we'll probably be doing a 19. So things to kind of keep in mind, um, you simplify the bird as much as possible. Um, we'll definitely want to do wire feet because of the talons. That's very distinctive of the bald eagle. Um, it has a long beak, then a hook. we got to keep that in mind. Maybe doing more of the... Flamingo beak, but shortened um, to get that. But then we do, so it's a mix, okay? And the thing is, you got to keep in mind. Okay, so that's the general of what we got there. We've got it down to basics, okay? And if you need to draw this out and, and do that kind of thing, you can. Um, and what birds you're going to use, you'll go through the book and you'll see what birds have a similar body, um, what. Because if you'll know, there's not much of a distinction in the body, so we're probably, you know, not looking at much on um, what we're doing for the body. It'd probably be more like the parrot. There's not much definition there, and the wings are going to finish it. It's the head that's going to be more distinctive. Probably go back to the kestrel and that kind of thing. Okay, so I'm going in and you're going to see me kind of work this from scratch and i'm going to tell you how you do this okay so i've decided that i need to start with white do my tail and if you've done enough of the birds already then you know how this works okay where's my there it is all right so i've got my white and I want to do a tail. That tail seems pretty broad. So I'm actually going to use all 12 pegs on this half. Okay. Um, but I may shorten it down to 11 or 13 so that I can do the rib stitching and it show up nicely. So we're going to go ahead and start with a chain cast on for 12 pegs, or 13, excuse me, 13 or 11 pegs. If you want it broader, but I think I'll do 11, just to be a little small, not by much. We won't have to decrease it down because it stays out where it's at. Okay. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. We'll take that out. And that on there. Okay. Now, um, typically what I do is knit over um, 11 to get started, and then I'll be doing a rib stitch. But you can start out immediately doing a rib stitch, but start with your purl. Slip your first one in purl and knit. But I've got to go get my purl right back. Okay, so we've got that started. How long of a tail are we looking at? It looks to be about 25 rows. Um, so what you'll do is you'll hunt in the book tail length. It's about what you want. So I'm going to say we'll do 25 rows. In fact, the crow's body or the raven's body. Let's do the raven's body as close as to what we need, but it needs to be slightly longer. Okay. 
and the length of it. So the crow's body is actually more of what we're after, but the head and beak are going to be different. Okay, so we've got our first row done. What we're going to do is we're going to slip that first peg every time. We're going to purl the next one and knit. Purl and knit. So you're doing a rib stitch for your tail. And that keeps it nice and flat and not curling up on you. Don't want it to curl up. If you don't want to do <coughs> this knit purl thing, and what you need to do is knit and you need to do it for double the amount and then you need to fold it back and then you sew it up. And that's about the only way to get out of that. <clears throat> Which is actually extra work and it's no different in time. Alright, and then knit that last peg. Do the same thing. Slip one. Purl one, knit one across and you're going to do this for a total of 25 rows. That should give you enough tail length, and I think we're going to follow the raven body, so I'm going to bring up my notes for that. Okay, so pause the video, get your 25 rows done, and um, then we'll go into how to progress. Okay, so as we can see, there's our 25 rows of the white and a rib stitch. Um, I've already cut me a tail over here so that I have it long enough to tie off. What we're going to do is we're going to leave these stitches open. Okay. And we're not going to touch them until I actually say to mess with them. Okay, so the next thing we know is we need to be doing this area here. Um, so that area there. And it's smoother. And so there's two versions of the back end of my bird. There's the um, chain cast on and then knit and then immediately start a short row. Or there's a drawstring cast on with you knitting six rows and then you do your feet. What version I'm going to do, which is not how I did the raven, I did... Um, the drawstring cast on and then I knitted six rows. I don't really want to do that so um, I'm going to do that a little differently. So this is how you decide this kind of thing. I really need to cover it the printer. Alright, so um, what you'll see, I'm sorry about the printout, my printer's acting horrible. Um, so what we're going to be doing is we're working on this section here. Okay, now you'll notice that when you're looking at this bird from other angles, it's much taller. The body shape is very similar. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this and after the feet area, I noticed that I only did 10 rows here. So I know I want to do 20 rows. I want to double it because this is a tall bird. And then the chest looks right and everything. And then when looking at the head shape, the head shape looks right. But I think I need to add a little more through here. Okay. The beak looks right, but it needs a hook. So I need to remember to add like a knit to um, for like seven rows or something to get that hook. Okay. So that's why I'm following the raven. It actually has some of the most characteristics of bird. Don't include it being based off of breed entirely. You're just looking for shape. Okay, and so for me, looking at it, the shape is more like the raven. But I am going to change up what I did down here. I did the drawstring cast on and then knit six, but I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is do a e-wrap chain and start a short row. So you're seeing me work this progress without actually ever having done this before. Okay, so what we want to do, we want to take our dark brown. And we're going to chain and cast on all the pegs. Okay. So we've pretty much figured out what we're doing. We're going to chain cast on all our pegs. All the way around. And we're going to ignore those tail stitches until I say, hey, start adding those back in. Okay. You're going to go all the way around, chain cast on. Um, 
If you're like me and it doesn't confuse you too much, I like doing a Kitchener cast on instead, but due to um, not everybody having an easy enough time with the Kitchener cast on, and it does make it a little more tricky when you're doing um, the stuffing, you'll have to stuff through your weave and bind off. You don't pull it entirely until you've stuffed. So it does make it a little more challenging on stuffing, but it does provide a smoother line on the back of the bird. Okay, so that is not typically how I do it. I usually like to go in and do a Kitchener. Gives it a smoother look. You can too if you're comfortable with the Kitchener. Um, do it, or if you want to leave the kitchen your cast on open until you finish the bird, you will be stuffing through um, stitches, you know, that you're going to have to tighten up later, kind of thing. Okay, so now um, that we've done that, we're just going to um, knit the row. And remember, we're not touching those. Let's see if I can get this better. Okay, remember, we are not touching these white stitches. Okay. So, I'm just going to toss that over. We're just going to knit a row and then we will start a short row system. Okay. So, what I'm giving you is an idea of how to go about making a raven with these small changes as well. Okay. Um, I have used this particular tail method for a lot of them, so you'll see where I'm doing suddenly a short row and I'm adding the tail feathers, and so keep that in mind. This is a good example of me doing that, okay? Um, you will get used to it. I use same techniques throughout the book. To achieve, so all I did was get a baseline, and then I go from the altering here and there until I get the shaping out. Okay, and what I am going to try to do is provide a basic shape of a general of, of most of the birds. Okay, that you can find, um, and then what I'm going to do from there is explain how you can do this. You can take the raven and you can make another bird out of just the basic shapings and change your color where you need to. Okay. All right. So here's what we want to do. We're going to knit 11, wrap and turn. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, wrap and turn. Knit 10, wrap and turn, and you're going to continue this, and usually I get it down to 4 or 6, and with this I will probably go down to 6, and so um, what you'll want to do is you want to continue to Wrap and turn until you're down to six single stitches between your wraps and turns. So, what you'll want to do is pause the video and complete your wraps and turns, remembering not to touch those stitches yet. Okay, so you should have, I want to say, three wraps and turns over here, and three wraps and turns over here. Yeah, so you'll have three wraps and turns here, three wraps and turns here, and six single stitches in the middle. Alright, so pause the video, get that far, and then we'll come back. Okay, <clears throat> now you'll see that you have three wraps and turns over here. It's hard to see. Let's see if I can get it. There it goes. Three wraps and turns over here, six stitches one, two, three, four, five, six. And three wraps and turns here. See? All right, now you're going to start with the peg you finished with. So you're going to be over here. So you're going to start with the peg you finished with, and you're going to knit two together six times. And I'm telling you in the notes that you'll be adding in the tail feathers. Okay, so 
knit two together six times. And then I say knit three together. One, two, three. Okay. And we're going to start with the peg we finished with. You're going to knit seven and knit three together. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, knit three together. Now you get the general idea that we're working back and forth. So now we're going to knit eight, knit three together, knit nine, knit three together, and knit ten, knit three together. And what I like to do is wrap and turn. This creates less of a hole to deal with. And then you're going to knit eleven, knit two together, knit eleven, knit two together. Okay. So um I'm going to continue until I'm ready to do this little wrap and turn over here and I'll come back. So go ahead and continue to add in your wrap and turn pegs with those tail stitches and I'll come right back. Okay, so I've done my knit 10, knit 3 together over here. What you're going to do, because this is going to start technically the next row in the written pattern, you're going to wrap and turn. And what this is going to do is going to cut creating a hole. Not that it really matters. You're going to sew it back in. You can easily close this hole up. So you don't have to technically do this. But I do it anyway. Okay. Then you're going to knit 11. And when you get over here to the tail um, that you cut for your tail one, you can knot it off. So you can go in and knot this off, and that way it's solid, okay? And then if you want to cut it a little shorter, you can. So that's not your way. All right. Now, so you knit 11, knit two together, okay? And then you're going to knit 11. knit two together okay and that completes that one now what you're going to do next is you're just going to knit around so you're just going to knit and you're going to knit four um i want to say five rows so you know four five six seven eight yeah five rows so uh you want to knit for five rows and then we'll come back and we'll do this area here and um, if you'll notice when looking at it it doesn't taper down like the raven does it tapers down we're not going to do that okay so what we're going to do is we're going to do more of a block off so it's actually going to be easier I think to do than to do the gradient um, so I'll show you how that works. But go ahead and do five rows of just knit. And then when we come back, um, we're going to go ahead and do the what I call the feet row. Even though you're not actually going to be knitting the feet because you're going to be using wire because of the type of bird this is. Okay. So pause the video and get that much done. Okay. Now. I have done five rows, and at this rate, we're going to do the, what I call feet area. Um, actually, it's where the leg is, so might as well be leg, but it's only half the leg. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is this section here, and it's easier than you think. It's a series of short rows, okay? So what you want to do, I'll take this out of my way. Yeah, what you want to do is you want to um, you want to knit fourteen. So we're gonna knit our way over fourteen. So one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay. So you knit your way over 14 and you're going to work with four pegs in a short row. So you're going to be working here. You finished here. You're going to be working here. All right. So you're going to be working these four pegs. And um, if you want to keep yourself from having to sew these up, make sure you knit the first steps. Yeah. Slip the first stitch and hit the last stitch, and it creates a chain which allows you to be able to add back. So, for instance, what we've done here is how many rows for the crow? Four, five, six. I want it a little longer. What I think I'll do is do, um, say, eight rows, and then I'll, I think I'll start adding back. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to knit four, four, eight rows. So here, and, and so you can go back and forth and just sew it up later if you choose. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you a little shortcut to say that you don't have to do a whole lot of sewing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip one, knit three, seven times. So there's one. Two, three, four, five, six. and seven and what this has created is half of the leg now if you're doing this where you're going to sew it up then you just need to do um a total including the first row a total of 16. okay so now what you want to do so that you don't have to sew it up is you have a series of chains let's see if i can get that image in there you have a series of chains up through here See if I can get it to show. Oh, such a tight area, and it's dark yarn. So you you'll have these series of chains here, and you want to work from the closest to the peg away from it. So you're gonna do that one, that one, that one, and that one. It should looks like it be one, two, three, four. So you know, it should be around eight to complete it. So what I'm going to do is add this first chain to the peg okay and if you've seen if you've done any of my stuffed animals you know that I do this a lot I do a lot of modular knitting and once you get the hang of my process then you should find that my stuff is a lot easier to do but you've got to get the hang of how I do things okay so I'm going to pick up my next chain over here and put it on the them in. You can knit the two together or you can purl the two together. If you don't want a chain that shows up down the side of it, then you'll purl two together. Okay, but today I'm just going to knit two together. But typically I'm one who tends to purl two together. Okay, so next should be that one okay and when you're slipping you could add um your slips with a stitch marker and that makes it a heck of a lot easier that's one of those suggestions but because i do this so much i don't generally need to use the stitch markers i see it and i just pull it up but um, if you are doing this and you don't feel comfortable finding it, then you need to use stitch marker every time you slip your stitch, okay? And trust me, it makes a world of difference if you struggle with this technique.
Oh, when it does this one for me. Okay. Now, I'm going to choose my next one. And knit my way over and knit two together. And it shouldn't be eight chains on each side. It should be about four on each side. Okay. Okay, and then we add one more. And we knit our way over. And then what I like to do is bring the original loops back on the first and fourth peg. And how you know those is you will see, and I know it's so hard to see on this. Let's see if I can get it. Okay, so you'll see this line here, then you'll see this here. Okay, that's a stitch. Then you'll want to pull up what's around it, and you'll see that it'll tighten this gap here. Okay, you'll know you'll pull the right one. If you have a hard time seeing this, it's really not exact science, so if you get it close, you're doing good. Okay, what you're just trying to do is closing that gap so that you don't have to sew it in. Okay. So you bring the original loops back on pegs one and four. It really doesn't matter much if you're um, just going to sew it up anyway, so you can skip that process. If you think you're going to have a hard time finding that, put a stitch marker on the first and fourth peg, uh, the a stitch marker on the first and fourth stitch before you even start and that'll help you know when you're pulling that one up. Okay, so basically we have completed half our leg. Alright, and you'll see this little lump here. The downside of working with dark yarns. Okay, but anyway, you should see this little lump here. That's your leg. All right, you're going to do the same thing in the next four stitches, okay? So do the same exact thing in the next four stitches, and then when you're done, just knit two, okay? And that should complete your leg row or feet row, however you want to do it. So go ahead and pause the video, complete that much, and then we'll come back and I will tell you what the next section is. Okay, so we've completed our little feet, and if you want to know if you've got it or not, you should be able to stick the end of your hook up in there. So, alright, so there's your legs. Now, at this point, you're going to do just 20 rows of knit, okay? And basically what that's doing is completing this section here. So we are completing this section here in order to, um, to get it back. Okay, so we're going to complete this section here. Um, and that's 20 rows. And then we're going to do a short row section to create that chest area. All right, so pause the video, complete 20 rows of knit, and then we'll come back. Okay. Okay, now, we have finished this section here. We need to work on that chest area there. So where we're at is creating that curvature that shows up in there. All right, so... um. This is where we're going to go back and start following the crow, or the raven. Um, it starts to be a wrap and turn, and it looks like it ends up being repeated just twice, but not quite. Okay, so what it says to do is to knit 23 wrap and turn, knit 10 wrap and turn, knit 9 wrap and turn, knit 8 wrap and turn, knit 8, knit 2 together two times, and then the next row is knit 12, knit two together two times, knit 10, and then knit a row. Okay. Um, it's easier than you think. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to knit all the way around. And we're going to stop here so that we can wrap, turn this back. 
All right. So let's knit all the way around. Okay, stopping just before that last peg, wrap and turn. All right, then it says to knit 10 wrap and turn. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wrap and turn, and then knit nine, wrap and turn, which means you're just going to knit your way over just before your last wrap and turn, wrap and turn, and then you're going to knit eight, wrap and turn, There's your last wrap and turn and just before it. And then it says to knit eight, knit two together two times. So you're going to knit eight. And then here's your knit two together two times. And then we start on the next row, which it says to knit 12, so here's your 12, move our way over there, and then it says to knit two together, two times, and then knit 10, which means just knit your way back to your starting point, okay. Then it says to just knit a row. So after we complete this, we're just going to knit a row. Okay. And then we're going to do another wrap and turn section, but instead of going down to eight, we're going to go down to six. Okay. So what I'll probably have you do is pause the video and do the wrap and turn thing again and do it down to six and I'll come back and show you what that looks like. Okay, so what you want to do is we were here so what you'll end up doing is kind of repeating this, but instead you're going down to six instead of eight. All right. And so what I want you to do is I want you to start like you're going to do this, but don't finish it. Keep going down to six and I'll show you what that looks like on the loom. And then we'll go from there. And um, we're actually almost done with the body and ready to start with the head. So... Um, we'll be prepared for that. All right, so go ahead and pause the video, complete that wrap and turn. But instead of down to what eight, eight, you want to get down to six. Okay, so pause the video and get that much done, and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so you have an idea of what we just did. You'll see three wraps and turns over here. Okay, three wraps and turns over here. Six single stitches, one, two, three, four, five, six, three wraps and turns here. Okay, so once you do your last wrap and turn, then it says to knit six, which I've already knitted one. So we knit six, and then you knit three together, meaning you knit two together three times. So here's one, two, three. Okay. 
Then you knit your way around, knit those two together three times, knit to the starting point, and then knit a row. Okay, so pause the video and knit your way around, knit those two together three times, and what was it? Knit nine, and then knit. Okay, so doing basically that right there and then there. Okay, so pause the video, get that much done, and then we'll come back and we'll get started with that head. Okay, we have completed the body at this point, and we are ready to start the head. Um, I may end up doing this a little differently because I noticed there's more of a neck than is normal, and um, than what is on the raven. Okay, so we may have to do this a little differently, but I wouldn't say it's going to be much different. All right, so um. I'm already ready to change up color to white because its head is white. All right. Um, so I'm going to do a magic knot. And then um, We're going to loosen that up. Okay, now what it says to do here is to knit 12, and we're going to knit 12 in the white. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12. All right. And then you're going to be slip one, knit 11. You may, yeah, I had written it down for what? For seven rows? I'm pretty sure. Okay. Um, yeah, I wrote it down for five rows. Okay, so I'm going to actually double it. Instead of five rows, I'm going to do ten. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to slip one, knit eleven for ten rows. And this is going to give you more of a neck. And we're going to kind of blend two different styles from what I've been doing um, with these last several birds. Mm -hmm. So, we're going to do this a little differently, but not so differently that you can't handle it. Okay. Um, knit. All right. Then slip, knit. Okay. So, you're going to slip and knit 11 for a total of 10 rows. And then when we come back, we'll be ready to start the curvature of the head. And that's where we're going to be um, following that picture right there. Okay. And um, so we're going to be following that pretty much from there on. We'll be adjusting the beak a little bit. And if you've been working with um, my parrot pattern or anything like that, you'll notice there's a hook on there and I figured that one out. And so it's really not that difficult to put a hook on the beak of a eagle. Okay. So go ahead and pause the video and complete 10 rows, slip, which I think we've already done a couple. So um, you do eight more rows of slip one, knit 11, and we'll come back and we'll start the next section of the head. Okay, so here's where we're going to start at. Yeah.
sharp back of the head. That's what we're going to do. We're going to be doing a short row. So if you've actually done um, socks before, this is going to be really easy. And we've been doing short rows already. So um, over here on the raven thing, um, it says to wrap and turn down to four. Okay. So um, wrap and turn down to four. And then you're going to slowly mm, work your way back out. Instead of doing more like a wedged heel, we're going to do a straight up short row heel. Okay, so we're going to slip one, knit nine. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What we're trying not to do is touch those end ones too much um, because if if we're going to be bringing those stitches back or we're going to be trying to pull chains to make that we then bind off, we want that to be a lot easier. Okay, so now we're going to knit eight and wrap and turn. Okay. And you're going to continue this down, wrap and turn, wrap and turn, down to four. And I'll show you what that looks like. So pause the video and get that much done. Okay, so let's kind of talk about what we've got here. We have a single stitch, and we have three wraps and turns. See, one, two, three. Then we have four single stitches, one, two, three, four. And then we have three wraps and turns and a single stitch over here on the end. That is what this should be looking like now. What we're doing now is it's going to say knit four, knit two together. Okay, so I'm already started. So there's knit one, two, three, four, knit two together. Then you're going to start with a peg you finished with. Knit five, knit two together. And then it says knit six, knit two together, knit seven, knit two together, knit eight, knit two together, knit nine, knit two together, knit one. Okay, so you're going to knit those two together. And you're going to continue to add these back in. And I think you'll have one knit two together left. Okay. I just go ahead and do this. So basically, you're starting with the peg you finished with, you knit over, knit the next wrap and turn peg in, which is adding it back in. So add that back in. Start with peg you finished with. Work your way over again. Okay. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then you knit two together. And then say you know one. Okay, I need to make an alteration there. All right, it keeps it smoother. So you'll knit eight, knit two together, knit one. And then you will knit nine, I believe. So let's see, press slip one, knit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, knit two together, and knit one. Okay, that completes that. And I need to make a note that that needs to get changed. There. Okay, now it says to knit for two rows. So you'll slip one, knit eleven for two rows, 
then we'll be ready to I think start the beak area okay so what you want to do is you want to slip one knit 11 two rows and then we'll be ready to um, work the next section so pause the video and knit for two rows slip one knit alone two rows okay pause the video okay so where we're at now is right here ready to start that beak now what I have here is slip one knit nine wrap and turn it eight wrap and turn it seven wrap and turn it six wrap and turn and you're going to start your beak you're going to need your yellow so go ahead and get your yellow ready so basically you're going to start the same thing but instead of working down to four and working your way out you're just going to work your way down to six okay so um, I'll get you started and then I'm going to tell you to pause the video and get yourself wrapped and turned down to six. Okay. So you're going to slip one and then you're going to knit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, wrap and turn. So we're not touching those ends and then eight, wrap and turn and then so forth and so forth until you're down to six and then um, get your yellow ready and we'll be ready to start the beak okay so there's your knit eight wrap and turn so continue until you're down to six single stitches between your wrap and turns okay so pause video and get that much done okay what you want to do is to go ahead and attach your yellow and I don't believe it's going to be necessary to cut that white, so just uh, keep it attached. A lot of times I find I'll pick up that white again. So just double half knot. Okay, so just put the white to the side. Now we're going to start the beak. Okay. Um, and wrap and turn. Now, what we want to do is we want to knit six for six rows. Right? Now, if you want to be adding these back without having to sew it up, that would be a plan. If you're doing that, then you're going to want to knit there. Okay. So then you're going to want to knit um six all right so one two three four five six but then you'll want to slip one knit five five more rows so slip one knit five one So I'm going to get five, two, three, four, and five. Next, what it says to do is knit five, knit four, knit three, knit two. Okay, but this is where the change comes in because we want to do that hook. Okay, we want to do that hook. What I'm probably going to do differently is do a wrap and turn so that we can actually get that indention down better. Okay, so what I'm going to do is slip knit over four wrap and turn knit over four wrap and turn knit over three wrap and turn knit over two 
grab and turn. Okay. And then what I want to do is knit two and then knit two, knit two together. Okay. Because we want to create that curve down. And this is how you do it with short rows. So knit three, knit two together, knit four, knit two together. And then you'll slip one and knit four knit two together. Now you've created that angle and then we're going to do that point and then we're going to add to it. Okay. So now we're going to slip one knit four knit three and then you're going to knit two for seven rows. So here's one, two, three, four, five. Actually, we'll just do five. Okay. So we'll do five and then we're going to knit to three. And then we'll do knit four. And then we'll knit five. Okay. At this point, what you should have created is out, curve, narrow down, narrow back out, and then we've got to create that last bit. This is where, if you don't want to sew up your beak, you want to start adding back in. Okay. And you'll see chains. See your chains. One, two, three. Right on that wrap and turn one, pull both those back. That'll keep you from getting too much of a hole in there. And my suggestion would be is to purl the D uh, two together. Okay. So purl the two together. Pull your chain back over here. Work your way over, purl two together. And you know, you want to continue that until you have the beak done, and then you want to bring the original loops back on um, pegs one and six. And do know that you'll most likely be picking back up. Here's your next one. Now, here's something I do. Pull that on the inside and go ahead and pull it back up and that keeps me up with it but anyway go ahead and pause the video continue your adding back and forth if you're sewing it up then you just want to do the same amount of rows you started with and so um, what was it 10 rows rather than the six actually i think i did the regular rows because the length was fine so Yeah. Six rows if you don't want to do this method. Okay. So pause the video and complete that much, and then I will come back and we'll start working on trying to finish up the head. Okay. So bring the original loops back on pegs one and six, and you should see what you got for. You see that curvature there dips down. You should start to see it. So what you're going to do is you're going to pull the original loops back up on pegs 1 and 6. 
you're gonna knit two together, knit four, knit two together, and then you're gonna tie it off. You're done with the beak. And at this point, um, you're going to set the You're going to switch back to your white needle. All right, you're going to switch back to your white and you're going to knit two together two times, knit one. So knit two together two times, knit one, and then slip one, knit over one two, three, try not to lose the stitches as you're trying to bring them over. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Knit two together two times. Knit one. Okay. At this point, it has doing three rows and then you would do a weave and bind off but we're dealing with a longer neck so um, I'm gonna do this a little differently. I'm actually going to just pull up my chains and um, continue the head that way. So you have all these chains and we're not going to really gather it like we normally do. Okay. And the reason being is we're trying to create a longer neck. As you can see, the bald eagle has a longer neck. This is how you're going to incorporate that. All right, so you find your chain. You're going to pull it up, okay? And I always like to do it on both sides so that I don't forget. Okay, so let's see. Here's the next chain. Okay. So what you're gonna do, slip one, knit ten, I think it is, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, purl the two together, you know, pull the chain, purl the two together, and you're gonna do that until you don't have any more. Um, I'll keep a count and I'll tell you how many it is in the pattern. But if you ever want to know, you can just count your chains on this side, count your chains on that side, and that tells you how many. All right. So um, you're going to continue that where you slip one, knit ten, knit and purl two together. Pull chain, purl two together. Okay. And what we're doing is we're working our way back down the front of the neck. Okay. So go ahead and pause the video. Complete that much. We're about done with the knitting part of the body and being ready to assemble. Okay. And as you can see, this is what you should have coming up the bottom. And you want to bring your original loops back up on the um, first and twelfth peg. You'll knit two together and then knit your way over. And then you'll knit two together and then do is a even bind off and this is where you'll be ready to stuff. So two together, 
and then get your nice long tail and you're going to do your weave and bind off and I'll show you what that is you want a nice long tail because usually you have touch-ups to do so what you want to do is you want to start over here toss the bottom loop over pull your tail through this is kind of an unusual bind off in that it's like a drawstring but it's not in a circle okay go back to where you were toss the bottom loop over pull through go back over here back and forth back and forth toss the bottom loop over pull through go back over to the white toss the bottom loop over pull through pause the video complete that much back and forth back and forth back and forth all the way over to here and then I'll come back and show you how to um, finish up the body go ahead and get your polyfill because that's what's next we're going to be stuffing and then we're going to be doing touch-ups so pause the video and get that much done okay so we are done with the loom for now until doing the wings now you see what you have when you go to pull your um, weave in bind off you kind of want to do it a little at a time and it just makes it a little easier when you get to the other side how to tighten it up okay as you can see there all right so at this point we are ready to stuff okay and this is what you should have right here now as i always say stuffing is an art form unto itself you will need to stuff that beak a little bit Try not to stuff it too much. Okay. Okay. Now, go ahead and continue to stuff. Now, I haven't, y'all noticed I have not tied off my weave in here yet. Okay. I usually like to stuff as much as possible now what I tend to do is try and um, stuff it to a point where it's fairly firm but not overstuffed and once you overstuff then it has a deformed look that shows up so you stuff a little scrunch it around a little Okay, try to make sure that it's as smooth as possible. And you'll see what we've got going on here. Okay. Now, a lot of times things don't look right until you add the wings. All right. So here is and you'll probably want to add an indention there and I'll show you how to do that because the beak is technically kind of flat. All right so you stuff here you might want to stuff a little bit more because you've got to sew that up. Okay and you want to stuff the legs some
and you'll probably still need to go in and tack up some areas. Okay, that's to be expected. All right, you'll need some of the brown yarn to go in and sew up the bottom. Okay. And you may have to tack those little holes. There's not much to that. Okay, and then you'll push this lump here down. All right. There's a method to the madness. So this. Alrighty. So we have tail to cut and sew up the bottom half. Something tells me I don't have any of my usual needles over here. I'll do that one. Okay. So stick that in there. Okay. And I'm going to kind of go on the side that I know. And what you're going to do is you're going to send it through. And then you're going to go on the opposite side. So you're going to do what is called a whip stitch. And if you have done socks with this kind of closure, you know what I'm doing. You can do a mattress stitch if you really want to get it all nice and smooth on the bottom without having done the kitchener. Okay. So that out of the way. Okay, then you're gonna send it through the chain on the bottom. Then you go to the other side, send it through the chain on the top. And then go to the bottom, send it through the next chain. And you continue to tighten it as you go. Send it through the next chain. Okay. Send it through next chain. So back and forth, just like you did to take it off the loom. And tighten it as you go. And you'll see what it's looking like through here as you tighten as you go. Okay, you'll continue that all the way across. And then when you get that done, you can actually spread out the stuffing. And it looks odd right now, but do remember you're going to add wings. That's going to really truly go in and expand what it looks like. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video, complete sewing this up. You may want to go in and do a touch up, and then I'll try and show you how to do this in such a way that it really starts to pop that head where it looks more like the um, bald eagle. Okay, so close that up, go in, you might want to tighten that up a little, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so we're ready. I've closed that up down there. I've moved it around. That's what you should have. Okay. Now, we're going to go in and work up the head area so it looks more like what we want. Okay. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to go ahead and cinch my eye area in. Okay, so let me look at an example. Make sure I'm doing the right spot. All right, so it's kind of close to the beak. 
So what I'm going to do is, I'm about in the right area, it is closer to the top of the head. And we're going to send it in like that to the other side. Okay. So about there. I'm going to send it in, pull it tight. Okay. And you're going to do that a few times, trying to create an indention. And what that's going to do is allow a nice hole for where the eye will go. Okay. Now, what we want to do next is there is an indention here in the beak. So what I like to try and do is send that needle up in here. And I do this with, um, send it up in here. And I do this with the parrot. And what that does is it creates that indention that's supposed to be there. Okay. And then I want that to sit back. Okay, now if you want that kind of more feathered look, you can go in and duplicate stitch some areas down here. Um, and if you want it blended out more down here, you can take a brown acrylic paint pen and paint it down, and that'll go a long ways of getting you more of what you want. Okay, I'm gonna pull this back so that the beak sits more straight. And what it's sitting right now. There. Okay. Now, naturally, when you add your wings, it'll broaden this area, add some definition. Now, I can tell you it's going to be 19 pegs, is what you're going to use for your wings. And um, you're going to do the closed wing. And what you want to do is make sure that those wings are long enough to lean to actually cross over here in the back. Um, if you think that the tail needs to be shorter, what I've been known to do is actually fold it up and sew it up. Okay. So if you suddenly think, oh, that tail could stand to be a bit shorter, fold it up and sew it up. Okay, just kind of go in and work from what you got there, right? So, I'm going to go in and I'm going to hot glue in my eyes. I'm going to make my wings. And at this point, if you want to make it look more wispy, you can go in and um, do some duplicate stitching. And I'll, I'll try and show that to you. Okay what that is and it doesn't have to be perfect because you're creating a texture so for instance there's your base you go around the two and then go back in and you can come over here and do the same thing you just do it periodically and what that does is it um, goes in and gives more of that wispier look that you might be after. See, starts giving that more jagged look and you can do that throughout. You can go a little further down, you can do a double, um, you can move over a couple, so you can move it over to here and do that and that'll give it more of the 
feathered look if you're after that. Okay. So simply go behind and then go down. And this will give you that feathered look. Okay. And do the next one. And as you can see, that gives you that more jagged look. Okay. And that's a way of going about and doing. Okay. Um, I wouldn't suggest trying to do it with a paint pen. I don't think it does as well to do that with a paint pen. Okay. But you can see it's starting to give that feathered look and you can do it all the way around. Okay. And you can um, go in with, because it's a darker color, you can go in. But now if you feel like this is too long, you can shorten it up some here and give it a little more bulk. That's entirely up to you. Um, you'll notice there's a distinctive feathering that shows up on the bald eagle. You can try to do that with a lighter colored acrylic paint pen. A brush pen works best. You want to try to put that detail work in. Um, I typically use these, um, but because the bald eagle has a very pale eye, I'll usually go in and go ahead and glue it in, but I'll take a light colored paint pen and I will color around it until I have it as light as I want it. Okay. Um, you'll need to do your feet and yes you want to do twice the length and the reason being is you have more going on with your feet so you need like three talons up front and one in the back and you need some length there but instead of it folding in half you're going to fold it where the length of your legs you want to be and then after that you've got to fold it all over the place to try and get um the feet, the talons, and then of course you'll wrap it in yellow and then you'll sew the wings on and you'll try to make them overlap this area and that's where you may end up to fold it up and sew it up. Okay, um, it just gives it that thickness that shows up in the image and um, so that's how you go in and you take a pattern that you've already got and you work up a new pattern and you see how that works. It's not as difficult as you think. Um, you take this whole big book of birds and it can give you the full spectrum of about anything you want to make. The trick is knowing where you're at in the body, how to change the color. This one was kind of easy. When it says head, you change the head color. Um, when it says beak, you change it. It kind of made it easier. Now, I had to work up something different on the beak, but at this point, you have an example of how to do this beak. You can do any other bird of prey um, that has that kind of beak, hawk, anything like that. Okay, so that is how you go in and you create a new bird pattern. By using the book, as you saw, I went by the raven, added some length, that kind of thing. And um, when you add your wings and everything, and then it's up to you how you want to add your details. But that's how you go about making the bald eagle, and that's how you go about creating a new bird from the pattern that will already exist in the book. Okay, I wanted to kind of come back on this, and... Um, describe some extra stuff that I had done and um, where to make it more like a bald eagle. I created this hood area over the eyes and I'm going to have a separate video that I'll put in the link below on how to create this hood area because this beak is good for if you want to do a hawk. In fact, you can do the same body in hawk colors. I'll just need to show you how to do the hood area and to create more contrast in there. I put a little gray coloring around underneath the um, hood and around the eyes so you can see it gives it more of that um, bird of prey kind of 
look. I also added um, woven in yarn through here to give more weight to the bottom. Um, there's a lot more shaping that I did in here. Um, I went in and I cinched this area here and um, put brown as your slit or black. I added some areas here, a little bit of fatness here with some white just sewn over and um, I showed you that bit. So mostly there's a lot of you play with it until you get it exactly where you want it um, in shaping and shaping is what it's all about. And so um, I also when I put the wings in I wanted more bulk so actually what I've done the wings are completely sewn out and in between the wings and the body is actually stuffing so to give it more of that bulk that the um, the bald eagle has and so that's where you'll um, want to do that that you will want to add that stuffing up in there and wings when you go in and sew it down but this is actually the finished bald eagle I wove brown and white up in here because there is more feathering and there's more tail than it looks like and so I feel like it really added the weight and look that you needed but I'm going to do a separate video on how to create this hood because I want to create that hood on the kestrel so I'm going to do a separate video on showing how to create this hood so that you can do it on the kestrel you can do it on the bald eagle and if you want to choose to follow the section where you can take the patterns that already exist and create new bird breeds with it you can use that to create the hawk in other birds of prey okay so um, the link will be below and I'll show you how to do that hooded eye area